Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna make this. I mean, I'm not even gonna try pronouncing it. All you need to know that these are Norwegian cardamom buns filled with custard and topped with coconut. I mean, this is like the best bun ever. Coconut and custard is just classic. And the cardamom in the dough just makes them extra nice. And you guessed it, they're so easy to make. So just keep watching to learn all about it. And as always, you'll find a full detailed recipe down in the description box with metric and imperial units. So let's see what equipment we need. We'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, another bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, a little pot for cooking the custard, a whisk, and a piping bag, ideally, but you could survive without this. Now ingredients. For the dough, we'll need some strong white bread flour, milk, salt, sugar, soft butter, yeast, and some ground cardamom. Now for the custard, we'll need some milk, egg yolks, sugar, corn flour, and vanilla paste. Then to finish the buns, we'll need some icing sugar, lemon juice, and the coconut. The icing will be the glue that sticks the coconut to the buns. We can make that now. Just get your icing sugar, add your lemon juice, and mix it until it's smooth. Then cover it up with cling film so it's touching, and leave it on the side for later. Now let's make the custard, it's super easy as well. Get a pot, add the milk, bring that over to the hob, start heating up. In a separate bowl, whisk together the egg yolk, sugar, corn flour and vanilla paste. You want to mix this up until it's nice and smooth. Don't worry if it feels a bit thick, that's just how it is. So just give it a good whisking and then bring it over to the hot milk. Custard is so simple to make. Get your milk up to a simmer on medium heat and then slowly pouring the egg yolk mix whilst whisking. You want to whisk continuously, don't stop. Pour it in a nice thin stream until you used up all of it. At this point, turn the heat down low. You want to keep cooking this for two more minutes. And that's how you make custard, so like a three minute job. Now you can pour it into a bowl then cover it up with cling film Make sure that the cling film is touching the surface of the custard to avoid getting its skin on top. And then leave it in the fridge until it cools down completely. And this should give us enough time to make the buns. So whilst this is chilling down, we can get on with making the dough. My kitchen is around 22 degrees Celsius. So on cold milk, eight degrees should do the job. Because I'm kneading the dough by hand, it's gonna warm up a lot. So get your bowl, add your milk, then the yeast, salt, sugar, also add the butter and the cardamom. And this is one of the simplest doughs that you can make. So once you've added all the ingredients, give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve any large salt or sugar crystals and hydrate the yeast before adding the flour. And once you're happy to mix, add the flour and keep mixing it to a dough using your scraper. And if the scraper is not doing the job, continue on by hand. You want to mix this in the bowl until it's one cohesive piece to avoid making a mess on your table. Now we can start kneading this dough. It's not very sticky at all, so I'm going to use my regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel on my right hand, then using the fingers of my left hand I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn and repeat. Once you've done this a few times, it will become second nature, the motion will become fluent. And if the dough does stick to the table a little bit, just grab your scraper and collect it all up. Scrape it all up into a bowl and continue kneading. This should not take more than 6 minutes or so. And once your dough is nice and smooth and not too sticky anymore, we can start fermenting it. Now pop it into a bowl and take the temperature. Around 25 degrees Celsius is what we want, which is 77 Fahrenheit. Now we can cover it up and leave it to ferment for 1 hour. And of course, if your dough is cooler, it'll take longer. If it's warmer, it'll take less time. Adjust the proofing times accordingly. But regardless, after the first proof, we need to give it a fold. And folding's quite simple. Pop your dough out on the table, smooth side down, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started. And flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table. You can pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's your fold done. Now pop it back into the bowl, Cover it up again, we'll leave it to ferment for one more hour. It's not gonna puff up massively, and don't worry about that. After the second proof, we can divide this into individual pieces. And this dough is not very sticky, so you don't need to use any flour to prevent it from sticking. 
Just place it on your scales, weigh it and divide it into 6 equal pieces. And you should definitely use your scales for this, otherwise you'll end up with wonky buns, you know? After dividing, we want to pre-shape. Pre-shaping is quite similar to the folding that we did earlier. Take your dough ball, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle to the reach point where you started. Then tighten it up, maybe pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's it, your pre-shaping is done. And we're taking this step because after dividing the dough, it's made up of many little pieces. We want to hide those pieces, make everything nice and uniform. Now cover them up and let them rest for 15 minutes. This will give the gluten time to relax. So now what you want to do is grab a little bit of flour, dust it on the table, or you could use a tray as well, or a plate. Then pick up a dough ball and using your thumbs, press them in the middle and stretch it. As if you're making a hole, but you're not making it all the way through. You want the edge of the bun to be fatter and the bottom to be a thin membrane. And don't worry about stretching them too much at this point. You want to just stretch them a little bit because we will continue stretching after the final proof. At this point it will be impossible to stretch them all the way anyway because the gluten is still not relaxed enough. Now you want to cover them up and leave them to ferment for an hour to an hour and a half. And during the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius with a fan on, which is 320 Fahrenheit. And the dough is puffed up nicely, now we can finish it. Grab your custard from the fridge and using your whisk, just break it up. You want to try and get it as smooth as you can. Just whisk it up and then we're going to put it in a piping bag. Now you could just spoon the custard into the buns, but it will not be as effective as a piping bag. So I would definitely suggest using one of these. And to fill a piping bag, place it into a cup and make it easier. Okay, now we can start assembly. Bring a tray, lined with parchment paper, get your dough balls uncovered, and we can do the same move that we did earlier. Dust them with flour lightly to prevent your fingers from sticking. Then pick them up and stretch them out again using your thumbs. But this time you want to stretch them further. This actually reminds me of another bread, Polish Biawis, which are shaped exactly the same way, but they are savory, they're filled with onions. So if you want to see a video on that, click the link in the top right corner. Now continue stretching your buns. Make sure to stretch them well, because as they bake, they may tend to pull back together and then the custard will pop out and you don't want that happening. As you can see I'm doing here, after stretching I'm correcting them a little bit as well. Just to make enough space for the custard. Now a little last minute addition, and I think this will work quite well. What I have here is one egg yolk mixed with one teaspoon of milk. I'm just going to brush it all over the buns. It will make the custard stick to the buns and also give them a nice crust. I mean we are going to cover them in coconut later. But anyway, this will make them better. Now just distribute your custard evenly between the buns. You can also grab a spatula or spoon just to flatten out the custard. It will fall into shape later on anyway as it's baking. Speaking of baking, now's the time. Pop them in the oven, they'll take around 20 to 25 minutes. You really don't want to bake these for too long. And look at those beauties rise. You could easily eat these the way they are and be perfectly happy. They're delicious. Well, you know, we need to take them to the next level. Now let them cool down completely before taking the next step. I would say 30 minutes at the minimum. Otherwise, if you try to brush the icing on on warm buns, it's just going to roll off. And look at that, I can't believe how soft they are. Now in hindsight, I should have done this differently. Instead of brushing all the buns at once and then dipping them in the coconut, you should brush them and dip them in the coconut one by one. Because by the time I brushed the last bun, the first one had dried out a little bit already. So when I was trying to dip it in the coconut, it wouldn't stick as well. But you know me, I'm here to make the mistakes, so you don't have to. So brush your buns one by one and dip them in the coconut, one by one. And that's the last move. Just dip them in, make sure they're coated nicely, and you're ready to eat your buns. You know, i always seen these in pictures and I thought, ah, they must be difficult to make. But it turns out it's just a simple bread dough and a basic custard. And that's how it is. The simplest things are always the best. So as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in the comments. And subscribe if you haven't already, my channel is full of delicious recipes. And even more importantly, I teach the principles of baking. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.